Hello all! Welcome to a slightly different wrap-up style video from what we normally do. Uh, we didn't film a whole lot for our last period in Indonesia. I think we were just a little burned out on filming and videos in Indonesia in general. Yeah. Uh, we did a couple things. We got to see Carlos play tennis, which was super awesome because if you haven't seen our interview with him, uh, you would know that he's a professional tennis player. So that was really cool. Uh, a couple other things like a Halloween party, we saw had a farewell dinner with the rally, and then we cleared out. So, yeah, it was pretty basic. Yeah. But we're going to do a little different, talking about uh, just kind of a wrap-up video. And if you like this concept, leave a comment and let us know, and uh, maybe we'll do these again in the future. More cruising tips for you fellow adventurers out there. Yeah. All right. Well, the first thing was that we did the rally to Indonesia. We did enjoy the rally in the sense that it was very socializing for us and we made a lot of really good friends, some of which we're still cruising with today. Yeah, I think that was the biggest thing for me was some of the social aspect of it, just getting a chance to meet like Carlos and Linda from Mirni Oaken um, or Trevor and Kimmy from Slow Flight. You know, those are really good friends we have now and had an awesome time with them and you know, just sharing dinners and anchorages, helping out with boat projects. I mean, you know, from that aspect of the rally, it was pretty awesome. And there were such a variety of people doing the rally. There were people like Carlos and Linda who were just leaving uh, for Aust just leaving Australia really to get going around the world. And then there were people like Volo who'd been cruising for 20 years. That's a long time. <laughs> so that's pretty amazing. We did enjoy some of the organization of the rally events, uh, especially the big festival in Pasar Wajo. That was pretty amazing. It was not an event that was put on just for us cruisers, but it was this huge big thing and we were treated like VIPs and that was really amazing. Yeah, so that was kind of nice having the rally organize some of those things for us, get us a chance to maybe attend something that we wouldn't necessarily be exposed to just as a regular cruising itinerary within Indonesia. Yeah, and in that sense the rally was a lot more about the culture and the local people as opposed to uh, the natural brute beauty, for instance, or um, specifically like typical cruiser ports and marinas. So that has its pros and cons, but for us it was more culture than we've typically seen. Yeah, which was yeah. nice. Yeah. I will say I think the original reason we decided to go with the rally was help kind of with the official dumb of Indonesia. Yes. And they definitely did help with that. We will cover that on another separate thought a little later on. Yeah. But uh, there were a few downsides to the rally. I think. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the drama, whenever you get that many boats together, you know, some of the places, the anchorages were too small for that many boats, um, which is disappointing that rally chose to take people there. So you had boats that would drag or hit each other, and there's always drama going to be related to with that. Um, but. And it was nice that the people in the rally had a variety of experiences, but it did mean that there were some inexperienced cruisers who did not fare so well, and they ended up relying on help a lot more, which, I mean, you know, that's okay. Uh, cruisers are good at helping each other, which is great, but um, Indonesia does require a level of independence. Yeah. Um, the other thing for the rally, and we heard this from a lot of people going into it, the communication from the, or the Indonesian side of the organizers uh, was not stellar. Um, we heard the other rally had a bit of a better luck organizing a WhatsApp group. Our rally was trying to rely on Facebook and trying to get in, told, in, get in touch with the organizers via email or Facebook was close to impossible. I rarely ever had a response from yeah. the Indonesian rally people. And um, there's definitely times where information is needed on you know, timing of events. Cruisers missed events because events timings weren't uh, told and if there was changes that they weren't communicated. It was frustrating, to say the least. But Yeah, in one of our last stops, Benan, it was a really cute little island, but um, Linda and I one afternoon were like walking through the island around the beach and realized the whole village is out there having this like games and festival and nobody told the cruisers, so there were no cruisers there. And Which, it was for the cruisers and no one told cruisers. us. And I felt so bad, but Linda and I like, we were the only two ones, and so we got to like participate in the I believe you won a trophy, didn't I you? Won, I won a really cool carved little bobblehead turtle from Banana Indonesia, which was awesome. Yeah. It, it just made like me feel terrible that this village put this whole thing together, and they were so welcoming and fun, and like, 
the cruisers would have come if we'd known. Yeah. So. Okay, we're gonna move on to thought number two now, and this one is some of our favorite anchorages that we visited. And uh, I think there's a pretty unanimous consensus for us on the absolute favorite. Komodo. Komodo National mm -hmm. Park, yeah. for sure. Um, for First of all, being able to see the Komodo dragons was so awesome. I mean, those yeah. guys are, they're like medieval, prehistoric, crazy, awesome. Medieval? <laughs> Maybe I'm mixing my timelines a little bit, but still freaking awesome. How about it's like that? like fantasy dragons. All right. <laughs> Basically. Uh, yeah, and the water was just really clear. Um, the coral was alive. The coral was good. The uh, coral was great, actually. Um, the fish weren't. Uh, you know, overfishing is a big problem in Indonesia because they have so many people to feed. Um, and despite the fact that it's a national park, it's not really, like, enforced or anything. Um, with regards to anchoring or fishing, but it's really beautiful. It's really arid. The manta rays, the komodo dragons, manta rays. Yeah. Some of the best sightings we've ever had was yeah. pretty special. It was pretty great. The second favorite stop would definitely be Banda. Um, we found it really interesting. It's beautiful geography. The people were very friendly and it has a ton of history because that is the island that was traded between the Dutch and the English for Manhattan and they had I mean and the history of this island is the they spice have these islands. spices yeah the spice yeah. islands so you have nutmeg and cloves and cinnamon and all these things and they were so extremely valuable but it also has you know the colonization history which is a lot of people were killed and um which is not a great you know side of the history no. but it is interesting to be there and, and walk and experience it. And the local Indonesians were very diplomatic about it. Um, <laughs> nice way to put it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was real, and we went diving there. And that, that was, was another great good too. Side of it too. Yeah, so it was a really good spot. Yep. Um, there is one place that we really wish <sighs> that we had yeah. gone to. Um, so many cruising friends went there. Raja Ampat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, field trip did probably like a hundred dives while they were there, I think. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, Delos obviously is a big one. They spent a lot of time there, did a lot of diving. It just looks absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we tried really hard to work it into the schedule, but the wind and the conditions just never really cooperated. And we were there kind of at the wrong time of year um, for the season. It was pretty much all the resorts and dive shops that were closed, so there wouldn't be a whole lot of infrastructure for us up there. Yeah, um, but maybe someday we'll go back on a liveaboard dive boat because we have several friends that have done that as well. So. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. Yeah. Now, there was a place that really sticks out in our mind of where we would not go back. Yeah. And it is called Bintan. Which is one of the islands up north um, across the Singapore Strait from Singapore. There is Batam, which is over on the west side, and then Bintan is over on the east side. We went to Bintan, and the city was, I think, Tanjung Penang was the name of the city? Don't remember, but... It was so dirty. It was horrendous. Like, there was just piles of garbage floating by the boat, and I'm pretty sure the boat got stained a little brown being in that water. It was disgusting. And we got plastic and lines cut, caught in our props, and just all this... I mean, the city was really unpleasant. The This was the last rally stop, and where the rally did the final party was, like, the middle of nowhere. It was really weird. Yeah. Which is part of the reason why a lot of people didn't go to it. Most people went over to Nongsa Point Marina in Batam, and um, it seemed to have a very nice, pleasant time, and probably the best marina in all of Indonesia. And that does segue into kind of our, our next thought about the trash in Indonesia is so, so sad to see. It's yeah. just everywhere. The trash is on all the beaches. Every beach we went to was terrible. And in the water all the time. I mean, there's just, there's a like systemic problem in Indonesia. They don't have the infrastructure and they don't have the education. Like we, we saw children you know, drink their plastic bags of juice or soda or whatever and with their plastic straws and then throw them on the street. Or and straight into the ocean. Or saw that the too. Ocean. Yeah. yeah, and it's just horrible. Yeah. Very, very disappointing for sure. Yeah. Um, not 100% sure what the solution is on this. Hopefully, further on, 
with reducing plastics and everything, there will be some success, but for the meantime, trash is just everywhere, and man, is it bad. Yeah, we've been to a few countries where they recognize the importance of the tourism industry and the trash that damages the tourism industry, and so hopefully Indonesia can get Join the ball rolling list. on that. Yeah. yeah. From a cruising perspective, uh, cruising in Indonesia is hard. One of the hardest places we've been to because there is no support. Like, there's no marine services, there's no channeleries, and there's no parts that you can find. There's no um, marinas. No marine. Well, there, there are a few marinas, but not a whole lot. Um, so if you're going to cruise in Indonesia, you had better bring all the parts and supplies with you that you need. Yeah, at the Cannes uh, Welcome Rally event, the Indonesian organizer actually said, if you think you're going to need big repairs on your boat, buy a different boat. Yeah, get a new boat, which is not great piece of advice. What you want to hear if you're going to be go cruising to another country. Now, granted, it was nice being in the rally because there were other people uh, who, if they needed a part, they might be able to find someone to trade with or find expertise within the rally. Um, but you had better be very prepared to be extremely self-sufficient because you're yeah. just not going to find it. We know several boats who ended up getting kind of stuck in a particular location because they needed to ship in parts, and shipping in parts in Indonesia is very complicated. Pain in the and ass. Yeah, I mean, there's just, there's very little in terms of parts and supplies to repair your boat yourself. Or even, I mean, there's stuff we looked for, like, we didn't really need, but you can't find hardly anything there. No. Yeah. Um, and it does... It is a little tricky because Indonesia is getting close to the equator, and so there are very large parts of it where you have to motor quite a bit, and that requires diesel. But there are no fuel docks, and it is jerry canning diesel every time. Um, there's a fuel barge in Lombok. Okay. Yeah. There's a fuel barge in Lombok. And but, I would assume a fuel dock in Batam, but I don't really know. And so basically, but it's pretty limited, so there's a lot of jerry canning involved, and the quality of diesel is not great. Uh, we used a uh, a big funnel filter every time and was well worth it because I pulled a lot of sludge out of that fuel that we put in um, which was worth it because we didn't have any problems but again something to be prepared for is one you're gonna need to make sure you've got a lot of jerry cans to refill the boat but two uh, you're gonna need to make sure that you've got something to filter it with because I would not recommend putting it straight in your tanks at all yeah, and we so we use the Mr. Funnel filter, but then we also have the bioside stuff. Yeah, we tried to bring in um, just some bioside because it is also biodiesel within Indonesia. So um, we had just some additive we could put in the tank as well, trying to limit the effects of the uh, biodiesel, you know, on our filters, the rubber, all the stuff within the engine. Um, so I think that helped. We didn't have any problems when we were there, and that was nice. Yeah. Um, the other thing, kind of related to that, making water. Yeah, there were certainly some boats in the rally who do not have water makers, um, and they were able to manage, but most people have a water maker. I would guess that it's pretty complicated to sort out the water situation, so... And let's just say the standards of health and safety are not the highest in Indonesia, so yeah. I felt a whole lot better being able to make our own water and not relying on stuff maybe we found in a village or something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, sailing in Indonesia. Also not great. <laughs> not, no. Um, as I mentioned, you're getting close to the equator, so there's a large part of Indonesia where there's very little wind, so you have to motor quite a bit, or you just get stuck waiting for a breath of wind. Um, but the biggest problem I had with sailing in Indonesia was all those damn fads. They were just flipping everywhere and you think you're in like you know two miles deep of water and there's one just floating out in the middle of nowhere so you're just you're not really safe anywhere from them and they're not lit uh, they're made out of wood so they don't show up on radar there's uh, we got incredibly lucky that a handful of times just looked out in the middle of the night and I could hear fish flopping around and there's one like 10 meters off our beam just floating right by us we got lucky we didn't hit them. Also, the boats in Indonesia, the local boats, do not use your standard tricolor lighting. Yeah. They have this, like, flashing blue and red light, which, you know, gives you no information about the direction or anything, and just one light, it's really hard to tell where they're coming from. So it's, it's a navigational challenge. 
for sure. Uh, also, a lot of boats, um, the local method of anchoring lights is not your, you know, white light at the top of the mast. Uh, they pretty much just get those flashing whatever colors yeah. they can find and kind of put them all around the boat. Um, the flashing light could be a boat underway or it could be someone anchored. Yeah, oh, you just so never helpful. really know. Um, so that was one thing that uh, even several boats in the rally did just to communicate the local way, I suppose. But um, yeah, something to consider. Also, charts in Indonesia, not great. Are, are you sensing a theme here, I think? Um, we relied a whole lot on satellite imagery uh, to be able to download um, kind of satellites uh, views and be able to navigate with that and really get a better sense of where things were um, just because the charts were again not great which yeah it's just kind of the way of life sometimes we're cruising in those remote uh, remote locations but I think actually in the first rally stop there were at least two boats oh who hit at least two yeah yeah which <laughs> oops not a great way great to start way to out, start out. <laughs> yeah. mm. um, all right so official dumb in Indonesia also complicated uh, particularly around like the visas that was a, a one of the big reasons we chose to join the rally was with hoping to get help with that process and they did which was worth it um, we got a 60-day uh, visa on a, when we arrived because we had applied in ad advance at an Indonesian consulate so in we Australia. got yeah we got that visa in advance um, and then once that 60 days ran out then the rally actually coordinated the 30-day renewals which was the helpful point that we wanted to utilize. We did yes. have some friends who did things their own way though. Yes, yeah, several boats that we know cruised Indonesia and, or I guess this is actually for anybody going to Indonesia, any Americans, you get a 30 day visa on arrival and then you have to renew it every 30 days. And it takes a few days, like when we uh, came back from the States and we had to renew the visa on our own, it took five days I think. Yeah, had to submit our application, then wait for it to be approved, then go back and get it. And it was it was a definitely a waste of time to to get that whole process done. And you're only allowed a maximum of six months in the country at a time. Yeah. So several people would have to like sail to another country and get out like or, Timor Least yeah. or Australia or um Malaysia. Yeah. And then um you also have the option you could leave the boat in Indonesia and then fly out yourself and we have a couple people we know who did that. Mm -hmm. um, so there are ways around it, um, but you know, I think the easiest way is like hire an agent just to help navigate some of those those issues, um, especially because one, one thing in particular just kind of summed it up for me. There is a online notification system that you are supposed to fill out when you're sailing to Indonesia. Friends of ours tried and could never get it to work. That, so it, like several people you know in groups that were in on Facebook they're like is anybody getting the yachter system to work no no so they had to hire an agent to be actually able to get all the permits and everything to come into the country so uh, maybe just save yourself the headache from the head pounding on the wall and just hire an agent yeah uh, now provisioning yay I'm, provisioning. I'm let Amy talk about this one because <laughs> she is our expert yeah provisioning in Indonesia is a challenge uh, not surprisingly, there is a great grocery store in Bali, uh, in Lavina, which is where we went, and you can pretty much buy anything there. However, for the rest of Indonesia, fresh produce, excellent, fish, excellent, you can always go to the local market and buy all those things. But your more Americanized or westernized things are not so easy to find, like cereal. This is not so easy to find. Um, cheeses? No. The cheese was a valuable commodity amongst the oh, rally. Yeah, Very valuable. <laughs> I mean, just a lot of your non uh, Indonesian, non rice, non um, vegetable kind of stuff is really hard to find. Uh, we often took taxis, you know, half an hour to a bigger city to find things, but. Um, it's it's fairly limited every village has a convenience store style place and you can usually buy eggs and then snack foods like chips and cookies and biscuits and those kind of things they would usually have like onions or maybe some onions and potatoes, potatoes maybe yeah um, but very very yeah. basic stuff yeah shallots There's yeah. shallots everywhere I don't know why <laughs> they use it in everything I guess 
Um, but the good thing was eating out was really cheap. Very, very cheap. I mean, you're talking like a full meal for two people for less than $10. Although there's not a super amount of variety in Indonesian food based on the places that we went to. I know that Japanese cuisine is quite different and in Banda we had a nice Japanese meal at one of the hotels, but typically we, uh, you know, what we were eating was nasi gorong and mi gorong, which is fried rice and fried noodles, so... And, and there's like no meat at the restaurants. There's barely any meat on your plate when you Usually order. You just order chicken on the side. On the side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it was it was an interesting way to try some of the different foods and whatnot. Definitely what we're used to, which helps us expand and broaden the horizons, I guess. Yeah. I mean, the challenges are there to overcome. Yeah. So. Okay. One final thought to share. And surprisingly, internet was good and cheap in Indonesia. I was, yeah. I was not expecting this at all. Um, we went through a, their provider called Telkomsel, and they had pretty good 4G coverage almost across the entire country of the islands we visited, which was very nice because it meant we had uh, lots of internet to upload videos. We were pretty consistent about that. Um, and internet is always a bit hit or miss in the country we, countries we visit. And Indonesia was definitely a good one on that one. Now I will say, lots of people had trouble. There is an app through Telecom Cell that you can like choose your package and stuff like that. Um, you can try to top up your uh, account balance through there. A lot of people will struggle with that, especially with foreign credit cards. So we found Ding.com. This is a very important suggestion when you are looking to top up internet accounts abroad. Ding.com worked very, very well to add a credit to our accounts. It meant we did not have to go into you know, a village and try to find the one convenience store that had Telcom sell top-up account cards or whatever. Um, so Ding.com was was well worth it. Which we've used all over the world because a lot of times it's easier to pay a little Ding.com fee than it is to get in the dinghy and then get a taxi and try to work it out in a language. So. Probably is cheaper to just pay the little extra. But, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, we've got a blog post on kind of wrapping up all this information if you'd rather Even read. more in detail, yeah. Yeah. We do have a lot of friends who went cruising who uh, who actually stayed for like a year in Indonesia. They did um, two cycles with their six-month visa. That would be Field Trip, who also does videos in the blog. Uh, Catalpa, who also does videos. And uh, the other one was Perry. Um, who are friends with Field Trip, and yeah. So it's possible, and they got to experience some great places. Parrot has a blog too, sorry. Um, they got to experience some great places and really see the country, which is a fascinating place. Yeah. I think that wraps up our time for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it, found a little uh, interesting information, learned a little something new about cruising Indonesia. Again, you know, leave us a comment. Let you let us know what you think. If you like this format, kind of a general wrap-up summary, uh, maybe we'll try to keep doing these for all the various countries we visit because we're up to a lot of them now. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for watching, y'all. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.